it is 6 p.m. Please stand for the pledge. Tell you, 
you know what, these are roadblocks that they throw up in front of you to prevent you from pursuing them. And you know what, it, nobody can tell me that we haven't been shortchanged here over the years. Nobody can, you know. Uh, I can tell you, you know, how many times, have you been to the Piatone Airport? Oh, I forgot, they didn't build that. Uh, how about the Cook County Recreation Area that was going right down the street, the toboggan the, the run and the ice skating rink and the, the fire pits? And, that would have been great, never built. Uh, the commuter rail station was supposed to go right down the street over here, on the other side of the railroad tracks. Never happened. It, it's the same thing over and over and over. They spent all this money, all these plans, all these grand plans, they go nowhere. And it's always an excuse, you know, for us. But for everybody else, you go to those prosperous northwest suburbs, they get it. You know, what do we get? You got a garbage dump, you got a toxic waste place, bring it down to the south suburbs. You got a concrete recycling operation, you got a junk yard, put it in the south suburbs. That's what we get. And it's time for that to stop. And like I said, if we have to get Joe Biden to pick up the phone, that's what we'll do. You know, it's time for us to get what we got coming. It's been long enough. This is nonsense. Are there any other? Yes, sir. Uh, I so I want to thank Mr. Bolba uh, for his passion. He truly is passionate about Linwood and um, this zip code as well as post office. What you all um, may or may not be aware of is that they are the owners of Lola's Cafe here on the corner. And not only are they passionate about uh, assisting in rallying the residents to work together and be aggressive um, about going forward with attempting to get the zip code and post office, they're also willing to sell this location so that this could be the location for the post office. You know what, it would be, we could have a post office, but we could have the Amazon Dropbox location, we could have a FedEx Dropbox location. This could be the center of a municipal campus. You know, it's embarrassing. When you come across the bridge, this morning it came over here, the state finally cut the grass over there. I don't know if any of you guys know this, because mostly I'm assuming they come from, from the north. Uh, so I was coming over by the bridge. They cut the grass. Do you think they picked up the garbage before they cut the grass? No. They cut the grass. There is garbage all over the street, all over the sidewalk over there. This is the gateway to Illinois and to this community. What kind of impression is that? People come over from Dyer. Dyer's booming, building all over. Streets are clean. They come over the bridge, and here's the state of Illinois. They can't send somebody over to cut the grass a couple times a year. It's embarrassing. You know, what's the excuse? They planned it all down. I don't know if you remember, when they reconfigured this intersection here, they spent $275,000 on landscaping. They planted these rose bushes. I keep that berm cut on my own expense. And it's 500 bucks a month to cut the grass over here. And I told them, who's going to take care of all this? Oh, the state's going to take care of it. I go, but they're not going to take care of this. So they plant these trees, these bushes. What happened? A year later, oh, the budget's broke. The grass is three foot tall. So I just want to bring you back a little bit because I don't want to get away from the conversation regarding the zip code. Okay, and the I apologize. And I know you're passionate about it. We've had <laughs> conversations, and I love it. Um, and I look forward to us having more discussions about it. But the seed has been planted, so thank you. Okay, thank you very much. I, I, I get upset, you know. I mean, <laughs> I wish I you know, I'm tired of people giving me a run around. You know, I've heard it all before, you know. But I think we get the stuff. I really do. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else here to address the board tonight? Mr. Jones? Thank you. Seems like I'm passionate, but I'm not that passionate. What I'm having a problem with is we've been talking for a couple of months about drainage in my backyard. And during that time, for all the time I lived in Linwood, I was under the impression the water in my backyard was supposed to be draining south. But on three attempts, on different boards, not just in front of you, I managed to get the entire board out there. And they took a look at it and said, you know, Bob, we're, we're going to take care of it. So they paid for the engineer to survey the property and told me how the neighbors and I could do this, but we could do it. And at the time, I'm in my 20s, I just bought my house, it wasn't a big deal. I don't mind. My neighbor next to me was a welder in Chicago uh, for a construction company, and he said, I'll help you, Bob. And he said, I know how to set this up. And they simply gave us direction, and we took care of it. 
and, and then suddenly he wound up with a divorce. And the good neighbor next to me was not so good of a neighbor, but that's beside the history in that. Uh, it started getting worse again, and I came after putting up with it and said, we've got to go back over there and get this done. I can't keep putting up with it, which is the same thing I started letting you know what was going on. Uh, you really need to have a, a good conversation with a person that's not your attorney and go over there and look at it. the one neighbor on the north side of me says, how do they expect the water to get over that hump? I said, I have no clue. I said, it's beyond the laws of physics. And I said, the point that I'm looking at is that when it comes to the neighbor on the north of me, he's parked vehicles over there, he put it right in the drainage, and I noticed today, and I didn't bring the pictures, we've actually filled over the drainage cover that everybody goes by. So, but with that, I said, forget it. It seems like the only thing I have left to do, and I'm trying to avoid it, because it's going to open up a big deck, because I was going to point out to our village attorney, Illinois statutes and the drainage regulations we have as ordinance, which mirror the state ordinances. We're not supposed to have vehicles parked on that drainage area. We're not supposed to have any obstructions in that drainage area. And we've raised it at least, by my eye, at least 18 inches. Water does not run uphill. So what they did when I told them it's okay to enter my yard and wreck the back of it while you're at it, I said, it's okay to go and I was told I have a letter from the village. I have a, Ray, a letter from Ray and we all were going to make it go to the north. What happened is they put the pipe across my yard to drain the one that's 18 inches above grade. So his water can come across my yard in a pipe. When it gets below zero out there, you're gonna find a frost line that's 24 inches in that area. It's gonna freeze that pipe. So that water's got nowhere to go but across my backyard again. Are you really wanting me to file a complaint with the EPA and the state to go back there and straighten it out? And then they're gonna give you a bigger bill. Or isn't it a whole lot easier to just plain and simply exercise our ordinances or exercise state law and go that way? My question is tonight, to get you to make a decision. <coughs> We've told me in paper we're going to do one thing. We've said words in another. We're going to do what we think is best. And you're going to have to give us a chance. I gave you a chance. The neighbor on the north side of me said, but I said it was okay to drain it off on the ditch on my side. I said, thank you. And I said, I'm not mad at you. Now, as far as that goes, I think he's been pretty cooperative. On the other side of me, we have ordinances that don't allow you to keep boats on the front of your property, side of your property, or in the drainage areas, because that's state law and our own ordinances. And I, I plan and simply am tired of repeating myself. And I've taken an interest and getting it resolved. I already know how it's going to go. It's going to go a lot worse than one man's backyard being flooded with water. Why can't we get out there and take care of that? In solving my problem, and I didn't bring my picture, the drain that was put there, and that is not supposed to be monitored. We, we asked for our permits, and we're telling the state one thing, we're telling me another thing, and we're saying, hey, I'll take care of it. Trust me, you're going to get done. It's not getting done. 
So, Mr. Jones, thank you um, for coming again tonight. Uh, and I'm going to repeat to you what I repeated to you earlier today when we spoke for our almost right. 30 minutes. Um, and for uh, as an FYI for this board and our residents, Public Works has been out there. Public Works has addressed this issue. I've asked Mr. Jones to give it a chance. Let's see if it works. As of right now, there's nothing that indicates that it isn't working. I also share with Mr. Jones that we will not be going back and forth tonight. So I do thank you for your well, comments, and the board will take everything that you said under consideration. Drop. And my point of being at this meeting tonight, because it's recorded, and we're supposed to be keeping records of it, all right? Everybody that's here tonight, I want them to remember that this was my final attempt at trying to get it done. Thank and you, Mr. Jones. We, we have, have gotten it done. Matter of the record. Mr. Jones, yes. we have gotten it done. Not the way you wanted to get it done, but we did get it done. It no, is I on record. You are you. being recorded in two here and there. So you are on record. I didn't ask them Absolutely. to put it in that way. They told me before they started working on the record. Mr. Jones, at this point, Mr. Jones, we have had this conversation no problem. I can follow the complaint. And we've got this as a night to remember. It is on record. Right? You can have but a copy of these you. minutes. Absolutely. Thank you. Is there anyone else here that is interested in addressing the board tonight? If not, we will move on. Is there a motion to approve the minutes dated September 28, 2021? Second. Moved by Blakey. Second. By uh, Clark. Roll call, please. Yes. Yes. Lily. Yes. Dunlap. Yes. Blake. Yes. Clark. Yes. Mark. Yes. That motion carries. We'll move on to our standing committee report, starting with Public Works. Thank you, Madam Mayor. <coughs> Good evening. The uh, only thing I have for Public Works is that the uh, Public Works team went about the process of picking up all branches and cut refuse cuttings trunks and everything else to take away since the chip is not working they cart it away and they uh, have a way of disposing of that that took place yesterday and today and will take place again uh two weeks from now that's all i have for public works madam thank you economic development trustee blakey thank you madam mayor i just have a few things first a big congratulations to the hell restaurant that opened right next door uh to us in the uh, uh, old senior uh, facility uh that's on lincoln highway they had a debut event on sunday evening that was just fabulous, but even more fabulous than that was the restoration and the renovation that they've done on the inside of the building. That's going to be a premier restaurant in the village of Linwood that is just going to be phenomenal. I mean, if you, if you, if you see the inside of this place, you just won't um, believe it. The only time prior that I had been in the senior, senior facility was to go and early vote. Uh, but when I walked in the other day and I saw what I saw, I knew that we were on the, uh, or just on the brink of something really big happening in Linwood as it relates to restaurants and, and places where the village, the, the residents of Linwood can go and relax and, uh, and, and get to know each other and just uh, have, a, uh, have a relaxing uh, evening with their wife or their family or what have you. So a big congratulations to the Bell Restaurant and in particular Daryl Petty, who is the owner of that facility. There's going to be a ribbon cutting for that event on November 1st at 5 p.m. just outside the uh, uh, just outside the restaurant. So if you are available on that day, we encourage as many people as possible to uh, be there. Um, there's also going to be a ribbon cutting uh, tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. for the new Dollar General that's going to be at, this, at the corner of Stony and Glenwood Dyer Road. Very happy uh, about that. This is uh, a, an establishment uh, that was uh, spearheaded by Mayor Curry. Uh, this was done when she was a trustee and we have led over into our mayoralship. Uh, but this is just a, another example of the type of leadership that needs to be in place in order to move Linwood uh, forward. Um, the other thing that I have, Mayor, is just still recruiting uh, for anyone that has business experience for the Economic and Development uh, Committee. If you have business or banking experience and you desire to serve in this capacity, if you could please let me know your name and your email address and phone number. I'd be appreciated, be appreciated. Can I move on to community affairs? Yes. Uh, in community affairs, I want to give a great big thank you uh, to my colleague and seatmate, um, Trustee Rolanda Clark, um, who's glowing light around on 
Sunday evening was absolutely phenomenal. Uh, we had about 30 residents out there. Yeah. Uh, 30 residents um, out there. It was a community building uh, event. Uh, residents were lining the streets, waving and cheering uh, us as we as, as we went. I want to thank the police department for uh, supplying the uh, escort uh, throughout the community. And, and, and then the Rolanda uh, Trustee Clark, I should say, also assembled more than 20 uh, slingshot motorcycles that, that were all lit up. And they, ran, they, they uh, rode through the community and they followed the bikes um, through the community. And I, I it, it, it encouraged her to possibly try to do another one before the uh, before the weather gets too um, cold because the community building uh, aspect of it was just um, phenomenal. We had people out there from as young as eight to as old as 75 and through the gamut. I mean, people were out there in scooters, little bikes, training wheels, everything. It was just um, phenomenal. So thank you, that was a job well done. Um, the other thing that I have are just some upcoming events. Uh, as I mentioned, the groundbreaking tomorrow at the Dollar General. Our free senior luncheon from noon to 2 is going to be at Lencioni's on Saturday, 10 16. That's this coming Saturday. On Sunday, 10 17, the Village of Linwood tailgate is going to happen at 9 a.m. to noon at the Southland Center. And on uh, October 23rd, uh, my colleague, Trustee Eves, is uh, spearheading with the Finance Committee um, the first financial literacy program for students 9th through 12th grade. That's going to be, it's an eight-week program that's going to be here at uh, Village Hall. If you know of any students who are in need of literacy training or literacy understanding about uh, their finances and about money, please encourage them or yourselves to get in contact with Trustee Eves so that we can get these students signed up it's not good enough for our students or our residents uh, to have children that grow up in the village of Linwood and not know how to handle money and not know how to allow money to work for them. That's the reason why this, uh, this uh, program is being uh, established. And this, pro this is just the first of many that are to come. And we see this program growing and developing into partnerships with Apple and with banks uh, in, the, in, in the area. And it will, uh, it will not only expand the mindset of our youth, but it will also expose our youth to uh, areas of finance that they've not been exposed to um, before. So thank you, Trustee Eves, for that. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> uh, the last thing that we have is the, well not the last, second to last, on Saturday 10 uh, 30, the Linwood police are going to have a trunk or treat from noon to 2 p.m. It's going to start at Alpine Village uh, Clubhouse, so please join them uh, there. And then on November 1st, we're going to have our first um, How Can We Say Thanks uh, event. This is the Fall Thank You Challenge. It's an opportunity for individual residents to show their appreciation for the village by decorating their lawns, their porches, and their homes in a beautiful uh, fall decorations. Um, there's going to be a first, second, and third place winner, uh, and it's going to be judged between uh, November 19th and November 21st. Um, so if you're interested in that, we have some flyers. Uh, here that we're going to uh, set out, but you can also access this information on our website and we will give you updates as to when that will be done. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Parks and Recreations, Trustee Dunlap. Uh, I just want to inform us that we will be having a Saturday night at the Dog Park Center on seeking to have a full planning and zoning board of seven members. We had five at the time. <clears throat> and I want to thank you, Mayor, for helping in that process. We now have a complete board of seven members. 
that was our target and as such <clears throat> I feel much better about our approval of processes and zoning uh, planning initiatives as we, as we go forward with that in mind I'd like to say that finally we have droid self storage on board it was approved unanimously last night and we can now move forward with our uh, self storage facility that we wait months to, uh, to take place so that's a great thing the next thing we were presented last night with um, a presentation by the LCS Group 2 Corporation. Uh, it's a leveraged capital system company, and they want to build something called a James Charles Perry Industrial Estate. What this would do, it would be like a heavy industrial campus-like environment buildings at the, um, the northeast corner of Stony Island and Jora Road. They have already purchased 18 acres of land at that location. And the building would go there, which would incorporate sections for manufacturing modular housing, solar manufacturing, wood product manufacturing, e-commerce, and storage distribution. Um, they also have businesses in China and Angola that do the same things. This would potentially bring over 700 jobs to Linwood and would be a tremendous boom um, to our village and really put us on the map economically and industrially. So, Madam Mayor, look forward to this. They were very happy to present to us, and as we move forward with the zoning and looking at the permitting necessary, um, I can see this being a particularly wonderful process that we go through to get them on board. So, thank you, and that's the end of my report. Fantastic. Thank you. Ordinances and resolutions, Trustee Clark. Since I do a motion for a first reading, no action is taken. I'll resolve to number 21-48. It is a resolution, a resolution approving the use of Class A property tax abatement for Leaks Supply Company for the property address known, commonly known as 19830 Stony Island Avenue in Pin number 32-11-404-021-0000. Here's a motion, is it supported? Supported. Supported. <coughs> motion by Clark, supported by Eves. Graham? Yeah, so this is a, uh, a resolution that would um, grant the Cook County Assessor the ability to abate part of the village's taxes to this PIP number. And the thought process behind this program, this class A program that uh, is authorized under the Cook County, uh, County Code, is to provide this abatement as an incentive for that property to grow, to develop, to invest in itself. And the thought is that if that property was to sustain itself, the surrounding community would be able to also support that um, jobs incentive program, I guess you would say that. Um, so you're not going to have any dilapidation in that area. You're going to encourage that area to grow into development and the rest. So Leaf Supply has made an application. They have this location over on Stone Island, um, the road right over there, um, is the westernmost um, area for this particular company. And the thought process behind their application is because it's the westernmost um, location, they struggle with some of their logistical and operational needs, and that's the justification for their application. Thank you. Roll call. Please. Yes. 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 Thank you. Okay. Motion for first read. No action taken. Approval of resolution number 21-49. A resolution of the Village of Limwood authorizing an application for the assessors of Cook County for a Class 8 certification pursuant to the Cook County Real Estate Real Property Assessment Classification Ordinance as amended for the property 2581 81, 2581 Limwood Road, <coughs> pin number 32-07-100-032-0000. Here's a motion. Is it supported? Motion by Clark, supported by Lily. Sure, yeah. This, I mean, it's a similar situation as the Class A property tax abatement. Um, this is a location that is a bowling alley, or it was a bowling alley. Yes. And the, the thought process being that the surrounding communities no longer have bowling alleys, so by providing this abatement, this can be kind of a central location to encourage the sport, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Roll call, please. Keys. Yes. Lily. Yes. Dunlap. Yes. Blakey. Yes. Clark. Yes. Marshall. Yes. That motion carries. Thank you. Is there anything else? So, health and wellness. Health and wellness. Health and wellness. Um, my co-partner here gave a glowing uh, recommendation, I mean a glowing praise, and I thank you for that. 
but it would not have been done without the village of Linwood. When they say it takes a village, it really does take a village. My health and wellness team, there's one in the audience now, Ms. Jacinta over there, and then I want to take, thank <laughs> Kelly. Yes. He jumped out there and really came in and started helping him and done that. Cheryl turned into a nurse that night. Little kids was trying to chew on the gold darts. She says, no, no. She became nurse, mother, grandmother, everything. I truly want to thank the village because our police officer did a, a wonderful job. Our fire chief was on board, gave me some information, and um, our trustees that came out, thank you guys for that. I saw David Lilly. Thank you for the encouragement because he's like, you can get through this. This one. Push the boundaries. We rode and rode and rode and rode, and I want to thank you for that. I'm now tired. I've had my exercise for a whole month thanks to this one. <laughs> Our mayor came out after doing three different events that day. This is the mayor that never sleeps, the Energizer Bunny. I just want to thank all of Linwood because this was a nice event. It's going to be an annual event. I know we're going to get more and more people, and I know you want me to do it again. Yeah, okay, I'm going to try. <laughs> <laughs> but I just want to just thank all of them. For this is a wonderful village. We are really doing things, and I thank all of you all, you know, when we talk about giving thanks and everything. We couldn't do it without Linwood. I mean, come on, right? This guy here, we're all pulling apart. Thank you for everything we do. Everybody on this day is, is just wonderful. Thank you. And over there, too. <laughs> anything else to help? And so the other thing I want to say is, since we're now televising, mobile vaccines, if you want them to come to you to get your COVID vaccine, um, you can call 866-253-9266. I have Ms. Jacinta Staples that is going to help put together another Linwood vaccination event. We are working with the Department of Public Health, and we will be trying to get that to you soon. I know the holidays are coming up. Um, but you can get your vaccine, you won't be sick around the holidays. It'd be better to get it and not and not actually catch it because this COVID around, we lost another pediatric patient, 18 months. It's breaking my heart to lose pediatric patients to COVID. You want to get vaccinated. Trustee, could you repeat that number again for everyone, please? 866-253-9266. Thank you. You're welcome. If I could just add two things to your report for you and Jacinta, uh, Sandridge School is offering uh, testing and they have opened it up to the entire village. So if you need testing, please um, check out the website. The information will be posted as well as on our social media page. And Vernon Park Church reached out today on Saturday and again on November 6th. They will be offering all three vaccines as well as the booster shot. So we will, uh, Natalie is currently working with them to get a flyer together and post it on the uh, website. So. And I do want to thank Natalie for that glory by pride flyer. She did that all herself. It drove me best and she put it together. It was beautiful. Thank you, Natalie. Okay. All right, finance, Trustee Eves. Okay, um, I would like to thank my colleague Mr. Uh, Trustee Blakely for introducing the financial program for me. I just want to add a couple of things to that. Uh, we have uh, currently we have eight seats available for uh, enrollment. So if you're interested, please get your student or neighbor uh, ninth or eight through eighth grader. Uh, I'm sorry, ninth through twelfth grader enrolled. Uh, we also welcome any residents with financial background to help instruct. Uh, the classes or to be a guest speaker and you could reach out to me or the college village hall and let them know and leave your information this uh, next year the finance committee will be having uh, we will be giving away scholarships for college bound students and to help fund the scholarships we will be having raffles at upcoming at the upcoming village tailgate on this Sunday uh, October 17th as well as Oktoberfest on October 23rd. We are accepting donations of new items to be raffled at the Oktoberfest. Items can be dropped off at Village Hall or contact myself 
at 708-935-5803 or email me at c-e-a-v-e-s at villageoflinwood.net. I also would like to uh, inform the residents that the Cook County Suburban Housing Rental Assistance Program has opened up. It will close October 9th. So if you are a landlord or a tenant and need assistance, please reach out because they will grant the money. And it's minimum that they're asking. Uh, October 9th. Uh, October 29th is when it's closed. That portal will close. Okay, that's all I have. Thank you. Public safety, Trustee Marshall. Thank you, Mayor. I have a few things to put out here. Uh, first of all, we're going to have a meeting on Monday, myself and the chief of police, along with the athletic director over from Bloom Township. He's coming over. We're going to meet so we can set the schedule when we're ready to get into the driver's ed programs and start to uh, administer chief's uh, driver's safety program, so to speak just to enlighten our teenagers how to handle themselves to they're stopped by the police. We figure if we start by they getting their license, they can carry it on through and it just creates another environment so we don't have some of the things that's happening in and around the world happening here in Network. We've been safe from it, let's keep it that way. So I'm uh, looking to meet with um, TF South as well to get them started as well as so we can come in and meet with Chief and create that same thing with them. Uh, we had our first meeting uh, with the new uh, community affairs, uh, uh, community policing uh, director there with the uh, lieutenant Larry there. Um, and it went well. It went well. We could have had more residents out. Kelly was here as always, and the man right behind him. Uh, so we'll get more people out. So what we're doing, we're breaking this down into how many areas? About eight that you eight different meetings? Or, or even oh, all? Okay. Yeah, this will be a lot. Yeah. So what we want to do is break it down into eight areas. He's getting letters out to those areas. So the next one's going to be this Wednesday coming up the 20th. And we're going to meet again. We'll have that group here. Then we'll take section by section of Linwood until we cover everyone. And it's basically let everyone know just little tidbits about locking your doors and different things. Keep creating that whole community policing that the, the mayor put out early on when she stepped in she wanted that community policing so now we're putting it into action so our next meeting again will be on the 20th and that will cover park avenue okay uh last but not least we are certainly happy that our three new fire police commissioners will be going into certification training out of naperville on the 5th and 6th of november we're very happy about that they get out and get certified uh, we have three wonderful people that got experience and then they're going to increase their experience. We happen to have them in there. They're really active with what we're doing. They meet, they're getting things done, and we're looking forward to, uh, to expanding that even more along with the chief. That's all I have at this time. Thank you. Move on to our department head starting with uh, Chief of Police, Dan Dempsey. Thank you, Mayor. On 10-9-21 at 11.40 p.m., a Lidland police officer was near 201st and Lakewood, and a second police officer was at Torrance and Glenn Melancian Road when they heard shots being fired in the immediate area. One witness flagged down the police and reported their vehicle had just crashed into the cornfield at 198th and Torrance. When officers arrived, they located the vehicle about 200 yards into the cornfield and a male victim lying outside the vehicle with a gunshot wound to his back. Paramedics were called, treated, and transported the victim to the hospital where he was immediately taken into surgery. Linwood detectives were called out along with living police officers canvassed the area and recovered several, several shell casings. The victim is still in the hospital but made, unable to speak with detectives currently due to his condition. The area has been canvassed and video has been collected. A press release was posted on Linwood's Village and Police Facebook page. This is an ongoing investigation. There is no further information currently. I do want to thank the residents in the area who called the police and provided us with their ring camera video. The Linwood Police Department will have updates as this investigation progresses. Uh, the Police and Fire Commission will soon be conducting interviews on our lateral transfer candidates. And the commissioners will also be meeting with P4 Security Services Thursday to discuss conducting a new police sergeant's exam. 
Our current list is expired, and we do have a sergeant retiring in November, so we need to get an updated one. Because of the continued support of the mayor and the board, we will soon be installing in Linwood the Flock Safety Automatic License Plate Recognition Camera and Vehicle Fingerprint Technology. These cameras capture accurate evidence that increases case clearance rates. They allow you to search vehicle type, make, color, license plate, partial plate, missing plates, or covered plates, temporary plates, license plate states, and more. The information is safe for 30 days. We are also able to connect and collaborate with agencies that have these cameras, which is over 1,000 cities in Illinois. This means we'll have access to all those cameras also. These cameras also deliver real-time notification directly to our officers' car computers when a camera sees a vehicle that is stolen, vehicle used in a crime, driver is wanted, driver is suspended, and more. These cameras are placed in locations that allow us to capture anyone that enters or leaves Linwood. Uh, one example of the importance of this investigative tool would be a recent homicide that occurred in Sauk Village two weeks ago. With the help of these cameras, the suspect's vehicle was caught on one of the flock cameras, which put him near the crime scene. The suspect vehicle and the suspect were later located, and the suspect was charged with first-degree murder. Uh, and secondly, the shooting that we had on Saturday night, the offender's vehicle had gone north on Torrance, and we will soon have a camera there, but with this camera in place, we'd have been able to capture this offender's vehicle and speed up the process of this investigation. Just so you know, the cameras that we have, uh, we have a site survey that is uh, going on this Friday on 10 15 21, and we're looking at Glenwood Dyer and Haven Estates eastbound direction, Glenwood Dyer, Stony Island westbound, Burnham and Glenwood Lansing Road northbound, Glenwood Lansing uh, Road southbound, and Burnham westbound possibly. We also have cameras that come in from Indiana that cover our intersection by the police station here, so we have that covered. So we should have the whole town covered going in and out. Um, from 9-28-21 to 10-12-21, the Linwood Police has recovered seven firearms. I want everyone to understand that these firearms and the, comp and the confiscated firearms I reported at the last meeting are firearms that have been recovered from traffic stops our officers made of people driving through and stopped in Linwood. These guns are not from incidents that happened in Linwood. They are from they are from uh, or from any Linwood residents. They are from traffic stops of people just driving through. I just want to be aware of that. Our tactical unit started uh, last or last Wednesday. Made a number of traffic stops. They will be out again this week. But right now they are working in four-hour blocks. So hopefully um, we can move forward with that. Crime stats from 9 29 21 through 10 11 21. We had one aggravated battery murder firearm, 42 building checks, 11 citizen assists, 13 ordinance violations, 11 suspicious incidents, 14 domestic disturbance, 39 traffic stops, 5 traffic accidents, and 30 assist ambulance. And that is the end of my report, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Chief Dempsey and Assistant Chief Bowling, thank you very much uh, for your uh, report, but in particular, the cameras that you just mentioned, the, is these types of initiatives that increase the property values of our residents, uh, because anytime we can do anything towards safety, particularly safety coming in and out of the village, it increases property values. Is that something that as residents we have to be appreciative of? So thank you very much for that and all of the effort that has gone into uh, putting these cameras in place. I just wanted to acknowledge that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chief Dempsey. Assistant Chief Robin Goldie. Yes, Mayor, thank you. Chief and I attended the South Suburban Organization of Police Chiefs meeting last week in Cal Park. Uh, we spoke to several police chiefs about working as a team to battle the violence in the South Suburbs because we're all, we all tend to have the same similar issues. I submitted a grant to Northern and Middle States Rural Law Enforcement Assistance Program for our K-9 division, so hopefully we'll be getting approved for that funding here soon. The Back the Blue fundraiser is October 22nd, which will be held at the Halls of St. George in Cherville, Indiana. Um, Protecting K-9 Heroes is sponsoring this event. They'll also help fundraise for our K-9 unit. 
Um, next week, we're looking to purchase our newest addition to the Linwood Police Department, which would be a three-month-old German Shepherd puppy from North Carolina. Um, this puppy will be trained by an Illinois State Trooper, who's actually donating his training time, and eventually certified as a canine unit for Linwood in the next several months, so we're pretty excited about that. We also received a $1,000 donation from Thornton Township uh, towards our canine division, thanks to our canine handler, Officer Lindley. Thank you to Thornton Township for that donation. There will be a Trump and Treat event held Saturday, October 30th from noon to 2 p.m. at the Alpine Village Clubhouse. We're still looking for people to participate in that event. So um, participants are needed to decorate the trunks of their vehicle and also pass out candy, which uh, will be provided um, to the children as they come by and trick or treat. Uh, contact me at the post if you're interested here. We're still accepting applications for our records clerk. Apply here at the records division if you want to be a part of the records team. And don't forget to visit our, Lin our Village of Linwood Police Department Facebook page as well as the Neighbors Ring app, which is up and running. I have cards at the front for uh, directions on how to download the app if anyone needs one. Mayor, that's the end of my report. Uh, our Director of Community Police and Sergeant Weinbrecht also has something to add. Thank you, Acey. Um, as Trustee Marshall advised, uh, we had our first of many neighborhood block meetings uh, this past week. I want to say a special thank you to uh, Trustee Marshall, uh, Superintendent of Public Works uh, Campbell, who's not here today, and obviously Mayor Curry for attending and assisting in answering questions and concerns raised by the residents. Um, we had a very positive response from all the residents that, that went. They appreciated the information presented. Uh, we will continue to uh, host the block meetings to better collaborate with our residents and their concerns regarding their specific areas. Uh, today I had a preliminary meeting with TF South, as you brought up, uh, Mr. Marshall, uh, to participate in their driver's ed program. We just kind of discussed uh, some of the you know, uh, things that they would want and, and things that we can provide. Um, so it was a very, very positive uh, meeting. Um, this Saturday we had a senior luncheon uh, from 12 to 2. This is a meet great where the village officials will be uh, good with questions from the senior citizens. Um, uh, during the October Fest on October, uh, October 23rd, we will also be hosting a trunk or treat event. And those wishing to participate, uh, when we encourage people to participate, please contact us uh, so we can get some more people in that. And then uh, something I'm very excited about is uh, that we're also going to be doing a Thanksgiving food drive. Um, we have begun accepting non-perishable food and clothing items. These items will be donated to families in need in our community. We'll be accepting food until November 15th. Um, the box for the donations is located in Milwaukee. Um, if you have any further questions, please contact me um, so we can get that uh, moving on. Thank you very much. Thank you. Fire Chief Newton. Uh, yes, Mayor. Um, first, I'd like to start with our call volume for the period from 916-2021 through 10-9-2021. We had an average number of calls, of 71 calls, which has um, been a positive thing because we've been actually exceeding our normal call volume. Uh, seven of those calls were auto and mutual aid calls and three of them being structure fires that were outside of town. We had 54 medical runs, five motor vehicle accidents, two smoke alarms, um, two fire alarms, and one natural gas leak. Uh, we're continuing our efforts to improve service and staffing model. Um, again, just to emphasize, uh, the end goal is to provide 24 uh, staffing and provide scalable and efficient services to meet the needs of the village of Linwood. Uh, we are actively recruiting for new firefighters. Uh, we will train, send you to the academy, and uh, send you to EMT uh, basic school. Uh, we currently have six applicants that actually we've already started the interview process, and we'll hopefully have that finished up by the beginning of next week. Uh, just to remind all the residents that we have a residential smoke detector program. Uh, this is where we'll inspect and evaluate your existing smoke detectors. If we have any recommendations, uh, we will let you know what those recommendations are, or in the case of two, uh, if you need to get a basic smoke detector, we'll install one uh, based on your needs. Uh, this is typically recommended for older homes because newer homes don't need new uh, smoke detectors because they're relatively new, so homes are roughly 30 plus years of age. Uh, last uh, Saturday on October 9th, we had the uh, fire department uh, hosted its annual open house for fire prevention week. Uh, just uh, some highlights, we have roughly 100 attendees. Uh, UCAN, uh, the uh, medical uh, uh, transportation helicopter from University of Chicago, uh, landed and allowed people to tour it. 
and uh, we did de demonstrations of fire suppression and vehicle education demos, and uh, we had a bouncy house for the kids. It was a lot of fun for all families around. So um, hopefully in next year we'll uh, we'll do the open house again. And we'll get more residents uh, to come. Uh, also, I um, just want to kind of uh, announce uh, the Lowood First Responders Association will be making a monetary donation to the Lowood Police Department in support of their key event. Thank you, Mayor. On Wednesday, October 13th, I will be attending a webinar hosted by CETA for the Low Income Housing Household Water Assistance Program. This program is to help eligible Cook County residents who are delinquent with their water bills to receive up to $1,500 on their outstanding bills. And on Thursday, October 14th, David Ray from First Investors will be on site to speak with any employee interested in joining the 457 plan. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Mayor. I have the contracts here for the uh, Crescent Avenue CDBG resurfacing project, which we will be having the uh, pre-construction meeting this Friday uh, morning. So we'll have a schedule for that after the meeting. And I've also begun the technical review for the Dunkin' Donuts site plan to review that for uh, conformance with the village standards. And that's all I have to do. Thank you. I am beyond thrilled that we have moved on to the next phase with Dunkin' Donuts. And I do want to tell you, uh, Dave, that I actually met with a resident last week and she said, what does Crescent mean taking care of us? Sooner than you think, we're on it. So I'm very happy uh, that we will have that pre-construction meeting. Uh, so, Madam Clark. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, first, I want to report that the tree grant project that we reported that I reported on our last board meeting. This is the grant that we'll be awarding Linwood approximately 200 trees, which will be planned over the next two years. It's been submitted, and we're currently awaiting the response to that. So, hopefully, we'll be able to see that. And the last thing is to report that for those seniors who are disabled who may need snow removal services for the upcoming winter season, Bloom Township is currently accepting applications for this service. So applications are available here in the office as well, and I brought a few with me. So if you want them for anyone that you might need, you might know that needs them, please see me. Thank you. All right. Just a few things to share with each of you. I want to start by announcing that tonight is our first night of streaming. Uh, we are moving towards the creation of a YouTube channel. So if you are not able to attend our meetings, you will be able to watch them on our YouTube channel and there will be a link provided on the website. Eventually we will get to the point where you can actually watch these meetings live. So we heard you, we are responding, we are creating more lines of communication and I am excited to have Mr. Steve with us tonight. He is going to help us execute this portion of the vision, so thank you. 
Um, I want to thank Mr. Ward, who is here tonight, for allowing me to help celebrate his big birthday. We had a delightful lunch, and we had the cutest picture. Um, so for those of you that say you can't get access to me, I'm here. Mr. Ward and I did lunch. I'll do lunch with you as well. I won't tell you. share with you that we have received bids for the demolition of the home located at 20042 Lakewood. This is the home that burned down probably <coughs> three years ago and we've been aggressively going after them. So bids have, uh, they opened up the bids a few weeks ago. They started coming in and we're a little bit closer to actually uh, getting that home demoed. I know that it is an eyesore. I have seen the social media chatter. We've been working on this for a while. So if you have friends that live on Lakewood or if you are watching this stream, please know that that demo is happening sooner than you think. Uh, we have been having some challenges with the water bill and those of you that know me know that I believe in being transparent. So, you know, I, I'm aware of the fact that there have been uh, some errors and we are working with the third party that's actually printing the water bills to figure this thing out. We had a training scheduled for today and we have a follow-up for tomorrow. We think we're a little bit closer to filling, figuring out what the issues are and how to work around it. You know, I say this, we're still new. We're five months in, uh, we're learning a lot. It's the system that we inherited and we will get this right. I would encourage each of you to share with your neighbors. Don't go to social media. Come to Village Hall, call Village Hall, email us so that we can help figure out exactly what's going on and get you the right number. Uh, I am excited to report that Constant Contact is almost ready. Uh, we have been collecting email addresses so for those of you who have ex expressed an interest in receiving email notifications, we are there. I believe we will be pushing that button probably in about a week or so. Uh, and we, as we put information on the website as well as on social media, you will also receive that email notification. I want to thank Natalie Oliver for her uh, due diligence. Natalie really uh, is an asset to the village of Glenwood. She has been working with the owners of the digital sign just here behind Village Hall. And unbeknownst to us, we actually have the right to advertise for zero dollars and zero cents. Uh, so if you are driving across the Lincoln Highway, take a look up you will see village events uh, flashing uh, along with some of the other businesses that are advertising. So thank you, Natalie. I want to make sure that our residents come out to Oktoberfest. It's going to be a really good time. It's our first Oktoberfest, so extend us some grace. We're figuring this thing out. Um, but we know that we'll have a good time. Uh, we're also looking forward to tailgating with you. Um, go Bears. All of you Packers fans, I'll save my um, trash talking for Sunday. <laughs> and last but not least, on <coughs> November 3rd at 6 p.m., we will be hosting our town hall meeting. Uh, this is something that we've been promising to do. You will have all of your elected officials present, as well as your department heads. We will talk about what we inherited, where we are, and where we're going. This is your chance to come out and ask questions and gain clarity uh, and help assist us in how we move forward as a village. So that information is posted on the website. There are flyers here at Village Hall. It's also on the Facebook page. So tell your neighbors, share on your social media. We want to bring the entire village out. This is our chance to have one collective conversation to get on the same page. And that concludes my report. We have no unfinished business, so I am asking for a motion to adjourn. Motion, uh, motion by Blake Hughes is supported. Supported by Clark Rojo. Yeah. Billy. Yes. Bill Lab. Yes. Blake.
Yes. Clark. Yes. Martha. Yes. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you for coming out tonight. Thank you.